All right, today we're jumping into one of the biggest ideas in all of programming, control flow. And look, this isn't just some random concept. It's the very first step you take to make your program smart, to really start thinking like a programmer. And that's not an exaggeration at all. This quote really nails it. Whether you're talking about a tiny script or a massive AI, control flow is what gives that program a pulse. It's what lets it react, decide, and, well, do things. And that's the million dollar question, right? It's one thing to hear a big, bold statement like that, but it's another thing to really get it. So let's break down what control flow actually is and why it's the key that unlocks pretty much everything else you're ever gonna build. You know, the best way I've found to think about this is to imagine your program is a story and you, you're the director. You get to decide exactly how that story plays out, scene by scene. Imagine a book that you had to read from the first word to the very last, with no chapters, no choices, no plot twists whatsoever. That's what code is by default, just a boring list of instructions that it follows one after the other. It's predictable, sure, but it's not very smart. This is where you come in. Control Flow is your director's toolkit. It gives you the power to change the plot on the fly. You can tell the program, hey, wait a second, check this first. Or, you know what, go back and do that scene again. You're not just writing a script anymore. You are directing the action. And here's what that actually lets your program do. It stops being a straight line. It can check if something is true, and based on that, run a totally different chunk of code. It can skip parts it doesn't need, or repeat things over and over. In other words, it can actually adapt. So, how do we start making these decisions? Well, we start with the simplest, and honestly, the most powerful tool in the entire control flow toolbox the if statement. This little guy is the foundation for almost every piece of logic in programming. The logic is actually beautiful in its simplicity. It's a three-step dance. First, the program asks a simple yes or no question. We call that the condition. Second, if the answer is yes or true, it runs a specific chunk of code. And third, if the answer is no or false, it just skips right over that code and keeps on going. That's it. Okay, let's see this in the wild. We've got a variable here called number, and we set it to negative five. The if statement then asks the question, is the number less than zero? Well, yeah, negative five is definitely less than zero, so the condition is true. And because it's true, the code inside those curly braces runs, flipping our number from negative five to a positive five. So simple, but so powerful. This right here is the moment our code stops being just a static list of instructions and actually starts coming to life. It's learning to look at the world around it and react. So let's dig into how that actually works. Now, at the heart of every single if statement is something called a Boolean expression. Don't let the fancy name fool you. It's just a statement that can only ever be one of two things, true or false. There's no maybe. Is the user logged in? True or false? Is the temperature above 70 degrees? True or false? This black and white logic is the absolute bedrock of how computers think. So how do we actually build these true or false questions? We use these guys, the comparison operators. These are your tools for comparing things. They let you check if two values are equal or not equal, or if one is bigger than the other. These are the fundamental building blocks for all of your program's decisions. And here is a perfect real world example. You've seen this a thousand times. The code checks a simple condition. Is the age greater than or equal to 18? Well, since age is 20, the answer is true, and the program prints out you are an adult. It's a super simple decision, but it's the exact same logic that runs age gates on websites, decides if you can see a certain movie, or unlocks features in a game. And I want you to let that sink in for a second. With every if statement you write, you're not just typing commands anymore. You are literally teaching the program how to think. You're giving it a little piece of intelligence. This is just as important as knowing what happens when it's true. I mean, a smart program needs to know what to do when the answer is no, right? So let's check this out. The score is 75. The condition asks, is the score greater than 80? Well, no, 75 is not greater than 80. So this time, the condition is false. And because it's false, the code inside those curly braces gets completely ignored. The program just skips right over it. The excellent message never sees the light of day. And honestly, the ability to not do something is just as important as the ability to do it. So the story continues, but it just went down a different path. A choice was made by deciding not to show that scene. 
Okay, now that we've got the basics down, let's talk about a couple of really common traps that pretty much every new programmer falls into. Knowing these right now is gonna save you a ton of headaches later. Trust me. First up, and this one is huge, missing curly braces. Some programming languages will let you get away with not using them if your if statement only has one line of code inside. Don't do it. It's a terrible habit that leads to some really confusing bugs down the road. The best practice is simple. Always, and I mean always, use the curly braces. It keeps your code clean, clear, and safe. Ah, and here it is. The classic rite of passage for every new developer. Mixing up one equal sign with two. A single equal sign assigns a value. It says, make this thing equal to that. A double equal sign compares two values. It asks, is this thing already equal to that? If you accidentally write if logged in equals true, you're not asking a question, you're making a statement. You're setting logged in to true, which causes the if statement to pass every single time. It's a nasty bug that's super confusing to find. Okay, let's zoom back out. We've gone through the mechanics of an if statement, but what's the big picture here? This is where we really start to shift into thinking like a programmer. Think about any app on your phone. Its intelligence isn't one giant, complicated decision. No way. It's built from thousands, maybe millions of tiny little decisions. Tiny if statements, just like the ones we've been looking at, all working together. And that is the path you are on right now. It all starts here, with mastering conditions. Once you really get conditions, you start to understand logic. When you understand logic, you can start building algorithms. And once you can build algorithms, well, you can build anything you can dream up. So that's our look at the very foundation of control flow. You now have the basic tool you need to give a program a mind of its own. It's a huge, huge step. And it leaves us with one final and really exciting question. Now that you can teach a program how to think, what will you build first?